Welcome back to Fully Books, the Hidden Gems podcast, where we talk to authors about writing, publishing, marketing, and all the facets of this crazy business uh, we call publishing. Uh, my name is Roland. I'm an author and a marketing consultant working with Hidden Gems, and uh, I'm very excited to be emceeing today with a very special guest. We are going to be talking about TikTok, and we have Jen Milliken, best-selling contemporary woman, uh, fiction author and romance author. And so, Jen, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, you've just hit the nail on the head. I write women's fiction and romance with a heavy dose of family life, so. And that's great. And we have here, of course, Craig Touch, the uh, owner of Hidden Gems and an author himself. Uh, Craig, how are you doing today? Over to you. I'm good, I'm good. Thanks, Joan. Um, yeah, so one of the things I really wanted to do as much as possible with this podcast is feature uh, well, self-published authors that have discovered something or had some sort of success and to have them tell their stories. And, you know, not only as part of a larger discussion about that topic, but because I think other authors um, love to hear the details about those things, you know, how someone else made it, what they went through, what they tried, how they achieved success in the end. Um, you know, not to use that as an exact recipe for the for their own success, but, you know, most times that wouldn't work anyways. Um, there's elements of these things that they'll be able to take away for sure and apply to their own situation. But for the most part, just copying something step by step isn't going to result in what you're looking for. Um, there's just too many variables uh, that go into something working or not. So really the point is to use these examples as a motivation to show authors what is possible, what they can do, because um, you never know what's going to work. So you should never give up. Always push yourself to experiment with uh, try new things, you know, eventually you'll find what works for you. Um, TikTok, it's such a hot topic right now for authors that I really wanted to have a discussion on it. But then when I was talking to Jen about what she did and the results she had, I knew inst instantly that we needed to have her on to discuss. And uh, I'm so glad she agreed because I think Jen did with her video. Um, it was it was brilliant. It was a great idea. It was so well executed. It hit so many of the right marks that it almost seemed obvious to me when I watched it, why it did so well and went viral. Um, but as I said, that you know probably wouldn't do nearly as well if someone tried to replicate that formula exactly. Um, but and I think that'll be clear as we go through it why that is. You know, but the takeaway here is the overall idea of why this video worked and what was done right and how the platform can be used and what it can do, what it did for Jen in terms of her career. Um, so you know, given how new of a of a platform TikTok is especially when it comes to authors and books and all that, there's probably still a lot of authors out there that are thinking it's just some site with a bunch of silly kids doing silly stunts or pranks. You know, that's my impression. <laughs> that was my impression of TikTok uh, for a long time um, until fairly recently. I mean, even Netflix has a new series on where they put a bunch of these 20 year old content creators in a mansion and let them create content all day, every day. And really, in my opinion, it doesn't do any favors for the platform in terms of that perception. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just, there's more to it that, uh, than that, the idea of book talk and, you know, a whole bunch of related hashtags and audience groups and stuff that I had no, no idea about. And likely, you know, many other authors are still unaware of. So you can, uh, authors can use this platform to do so much more, reach a lot of new people. And, um, all they need is a phone and a bit of imagination. That's all it took for Jen. And, uh, anyways, it's best if we let her tell her story, but let I, I think it's even better if we start off by showing her TikTok video or listening to it if you're just listening uh, to it as a podcast instead of watching on YouTube. And then, you know, we'll pass it over to Jen. Six years ago today, my boyfriend called me and broke up with me. At first, I thought it was just an April Fool's joke, but he told me that it wasn't. It blindsided me and it broke my heart. So my best friend convinced me to go to a bar and I met a guy and we had insane chemistry. So we decided to go home together, but we wouldn't exchange last names or contact information. Well, I ended up pregnant. And when I went back to his apartment to tell him, he had moved. So fast forward to now and my daughter needs emergency surgery. And guess who is her surgeon? Only he doesn't know it's his daughter he's operating on. And I'm going to have to tell him. If you want to know how it goes, read the book. That's the video. Now let's, thanks for coming, Jen. And, you know, why don't you talk us through your thought processes and all that. 
Okay, well, um, as far as that video goes, there wasn't, I'm gonna be really honest, there wasn't a lot of thought process that went into that, which is again, why TikTok can be so, so great and so effective. But um, on that day, I had just, you know, um, come home from the gym and I was probably, you know, endorphins running, you know, things like that. And I was like, it was April 1st, so April Fool's Day. And I was like, you know, I have a book that starts out on April Fool's Day. Like the very first words in the book are April Fool's. And so I was like, I'm just going to throw something together, put it on TikTok. And until that point, I didn't have very much momentum. And I was like, you know, nobody's going to see it anyway, whatever. And so I did it and I didn't, it wasn't planned. I hadn't written out what I was going to say. It was my second take because I kind of like flubbed the first one. And I just spoke and put some music to it. And I um, posted it later that day. And then when I went to sleep that night, it had like 130 views. And I was sort of like, well, you know, whatever. It's not like I expected anything of it. And I was still pretty new to TikTok at that point. And I just sort of like told my husband, um, sometimes I wonder if the universe is like, when is she gonna wake up and realize that she's not supposed to be a writer? There's other stuff she's supposed to be doing in the world. And then I woke up on Friday morning and it was just going bananas, the video was. <laughs> like, it was yeah, insane. Like like what 14 million views later and uh, yeah now we're are, like right? 14 million views later and it's been shared like 60,000 times and i went on the um morning news and it's been optioned for film and tv and it's like yeah. what <laughs> that's i mean that's incredible i love that that story of like you know you had 130 views you're like i don't know i it, it's just a video I just did coming home from the gym and then you yeah. wake up and it's like, boom, you had no idea. And I think those elements that you talked about, um, it's what I mean where, you know, you can't just replicate that. Like you, you put it out yeah. on April Fool's Day, right? And so that's going to get some traction right there, right? And right. We can't all replicate the success by always putting it out on April Fool's Day. That's not going to work, right? right? There's so many elements that went into it there. It, I mean, it seems like, yeah, like catching lightning in a bottle, I guess. But at, at the same time, like um, the thing to me that stood out about it is uh, you were so ambiguous about whether it's a true story or not a true story. The, the beginning part, which I thought was really effective. That must have been such a bold decision to make. I mean, what gave you the chutzpah to do that? I, I know. Well, I'm not typically a very bold person anyway. Um, but um, I don't know. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to talk like the, you know, protagonist, like the main conflict in the story is is my conflict. And I'm her. I'm Aubrey. That's the, her name, Aubrey Reynolds. I'm Aubrey Reynolds, and this is my problem. And that was it. That's all that I did, really. I mean, but I don't even know that I meant to do it. I write in um, deep first-person point of view. So I just spoke in the same way that I write, I guess. It's That's so correct. funny because I'm I'm obviously um, completely um, um, what's the word uh, I I obviously fell for it because when I, I think I even emailed you when about it after I watched it and yeah. I was like is that a true story <laughs> like I was like is that what happened to you because I didn't even I mean I watched it to the end I know you were selling the book at it but I was still like I wonder if it's based on a true story. <laughs> Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. And I actually do have a book that's based on a true story, uh, like of how I met my husband. And I don't talk about it very much because I don't know how to talk about it because it is true. Is Yeah, I see. That's that's really interesting. And also, I mean, yeah. when you have a book like that, do do your family members know that it's based around uh, uh, you and your husband? And oh, scandal? Yeah. no, no, they definitely know. Um, and I, you know, got the permission of some people before I told the story because it's very multifaceted. So, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I think the reason that the TikTok video worked so well is because you got to that conflict so brilliantly. So when you write a blurb, you've got such a small amount of space to write. And it's right. the same with the TikTok. It's like you had a perfect synopsis and you said you just winged it. I did just wing it. I did not plan any of what I said. I just spoke. Yeah, it was like an elevator pitch, right? It was just like yeah. the perfect hook and it just led in so brilliantly to uh to the, Thank you. To the story um 
Tell us like what this did. I mean, you, you touched on it briefly, but what this did for your career, what, the, what it did for the book, how it was doing sort of before that video and then after that video and how, like what time it took to, to reach whatever levels of success you got. And then the offers that came in, like what's the timeline and all that? Everything started happening really, really quickly. Um, it was a Friday. And so by Friday evening, the book was like just climbing up the charts on uh, Amazon, like in the ranking for Kindle. <clears throat> and so um, by like Monday, it was number two in the entire Kindle store. And it was just insanity. It was just insane. Yeah. And then it was listed at number 10 on the Amazon charts. And, um, and so like people were reaching out, you know, I had um, authors like, you know, one thing I will say that's really beautiful about the author community is that they get so excited for one another because I know romance can get kind of like a bad rap sometimes or people have certain ideas about romance, you know, novels. Um, and so when one of us wins, all of us wins, you know, and they all these these ladies, they really have that mentality. And it's so beautiful to see people come together and be excited for one another. And I had some really sweet people reach out to me. And so when I started to get the not so sweet people reaching out to me, um, obviously not going to name names or say anything, but like um, different agents who were maybe not, you know, they didn't have the best of intentions. Um, I was able to reach out to these new author friends and say, hey, what's the deal with this? And they were like, oh, no, don't do that, but do this other thing. And also maybe think about this. And, you know, so it really has been, I mean, the experience has been amazing, of course, from a career standpoint, but I've also made some really cool friends, which has been nice. And I've met, I've had so many messages from readers that are just like, they just blow me away, these messages. It's like, okay, this is why I do it right here, these messages from readers. Oh, that 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 gave me made my heart warm listening to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's what we want to hear, right? There's so many times where um, you hear stories of authors that are in the in the bad sense, where it's like they think that they can only succeed when some other author fails, as if like people only read one book or from one author, which is totally not true, and it's something yeah. that we talk mm -mm. about so often in, on the blog. So it's good to hear that um, it sounds like the good side far outweighed the bad side for you. Right? Oh yeah, most definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so before Friday then, <clears throat> where was the book? It was ranked, you know, I guess fairly low. <laughs> yeah, so clearly, you know, this this just killed it, right? Number two in the Kindle store is amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and, it, uh, yeah it was you know. just nuts. It was bananas, the whole thing. <laughs> That's awesome. that, it was it was a very well put together book though i think uh you know when you're advertising something it's all very well getting people's attention but then if they don't want to buy the product then they're not going to buy the product so i think right. you have to have got everything packaged together right for it to have worked yes. that way yes because the book was four years old um i had spent a lot of time you know learning about how to write an effective blurb or um you know, I had my covers redone at like, I think two years ago. So it was a fresh cover. And, um, you know, I had the uh, metadata updated, you know, like throughout time, I have been trying to do these things to try and get it um, seen more, you know. Um, and I mean, luckily, I had all those things in place so that when this big like moment finally happened, it was like dominoes, you know. That's such an important point too, because I didn't even realize that it was an older book. I was kind of, um, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking it was a newer release. That's uh, that's an amazing thing to to sort of realize for authors, because a lot of times we we think that if, once a book is old, you know, we've got to move on to the next book because that book has run its course. It's not going to do anything more. There's little we can do to breathe new life into it. And clearly, that's not true. New platforms like TikTok or or whatever can breathe new life into an old project and take it to levels of success it didn't ever see, right? Yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah. So then you you ended up, I guess, signing with an agent and getting... Yep, that yep. I just um, signed with an agent in October. Um, and now I'm working on something that she can take to traditional publishers. That's our next That's for step. a different project, right? But so for yeah. the optioning of the movie deal, was that because you had the agent? Oh, 
Okay, no, I did not have an agent when that happened. I had a um, production company reach out to me and um, I was sort of like, oh no, what do I do now? Like, I don't know. I don't know a next step with this. What do I do? And again, here comes an author friend helping me out. I reached out to somebody because I knew that one of their books had been optioned before. And so I said, what do I do? And she said, here is the name of my entertainment lawyer. So I went to her and the entertainment lawyer um, dealt with the production company and they decided that they definitely wanted to move forward with it and option it. And so she structured the deal for me. And then that was that. That's amazing. I mean, that's what that's what all of us who get into this business, you know, would someday want is something like that. Isn't it going to be amazing to see your story on screen? I can't even I, I just I, I just tell myself it's an honor to have been considered, you know, like, like just <laughs> you're practicing your Oscar speech. <laughs> cautious optimism. That's what I'm practicing. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask about how you got into TikTok in the first place. It's like, did you uh, join TikTok for personal reasons? Did you join it with the plan of promoting your books? Um, no. So I have a friend here in Scottsdale, and she is an interior designer and a jewelry designer, and she is on TikTok. And she, like sometime last year, was like, you should be on TikTok for your books. And I was like, no way. And she's like, no, I'm not joking. You need to get on TikTok. And I was like, um, okay. So I just sort of did it randomly. And that's how it started. <laughs> and what, what did you come up with to post? Because I mean, I would talk to so many authors who were like, we need to start on TikTok, need to start on TikTok, but they don't understand, don't know what to post because it's like an alien environment. So how did you assimilate yourself to that? And how did you know what to start posting? I just started watching as many videos as I could um, from other authors to kind of get like a vibe on how they were approaching the app. Mm -hmm. That's about it. So, and I, I, well, what are your, so what have you, what did you learn from that? Like, what are the sort of commonalities that um, authors are doing that um, you think are like from the most successful ones that you've watched, you know, versus mm -hmm. the ones that aren't successful. Have you noticed anything? Yeah. So, um, you know, you only have so much time to get somebody's attention, right? So, um, your, your hook needs to happen like in the, in 30 seconds time. I mean, they say that like what 15 seconds or less, like those videos do the best, but of course, the one that went viral for me was like a minute long. So that's, it doesn't, it defies the logic, I guess, in that way. But um, yeah, I think, I think the, what you have to do is just get your hook out there right away. And it, I think the most surprising thing is that it might not even be what you think it is for your book. Like the, the, the biggest conflict in your book may not be your best hook for TikTok, especially. Yeah, I think That's yours worked out well, despite the length, because you were telling a story that was engaging and that like, even for me, I was like, watching that, like, oh, I want to see how this goes, like, what's gonna happen. <laughs> and then, you know, and then you pull out the book, I wasn't even expecting that at all. I just thought it was just gonna be your story or whatever. But um, yeah, I think that's why, you know, a lot of people, the, the content, I think it's hard to keep people's um, attention for longer than especially yeah. these days, you know, everything's bite size and right moving around and quick so yeah it's like if, but if you have a if you can tell an engaging story that there's no you know that's it's not dull it's not like you got to ramp up you right from the get-go it was like but, it, was, it was so yeah. well done yeah yeah but it, it wasn't your first video was it i mean we've been looking at the other ones and you tried yeah. different formats and things so how did you pin down this one i don't i i don't know i i, just, I wish i had something really concrete and i could be like well, I spent time, you know, studying and doing this thing, but this one was just totally, totally random. Well, maybe part of it was the fact that you had done so many beforehand. And it's mm -hmm. like, I guess it's like spinning a roulette wheel, you where it's going to land. Yeah. Because, but you, the more times you do it, the better you're going to get and the, the more opportunity you have for something to, to catch people's attention. Right, right. And my first video did kind of well. I was joking with my friends that it was like a... Um, like TikTok, maybe like put some weight into your first video to like make you think that you're gonna do well, you know, like like pull you in a little bit, you know. But um, my first video, I was just 
sitting down and just sort of like moving my shoulders to a song as like the synopsis kind of went down. Um, and I, I sort of um, found my way into the TikTok badlands at that point. Like I was not hitting my target audience, let's put it that way. And I was really- <laughs> That was, sounds uh, like a story. It, it's not, I mean, you could go see the comments for yourself, you know, they're right okay. there. That's not, they're not great. But um, um, sorry, you had that experience. <laughs> such is life, you know. But um, but yeah. So then after that, I was like, ah, oh, dejected, disappointed. You know, like, man, this is not why I'm here. These definitely, I'm not finding my people. That's for certain. Like, how do I find my audience? And I just think that the the more that I posted, that was like, you know, it's all book content. So the more that I made it clear that it was about books, I think the algorithm learned you know, and began to show me to people who were also looking at videos similar in content. That's fascinating. And again, that only happened because you continue doing. Where do you find the motivation to keep making videos, especially in the beginning when you weren't getting traction? I, um, I can't stand the idea of not exhausting something. Like, I will probably fail at something a hundred times before I give up because I just... I'm just too stubborn, I think, to stop. I don't know. That's what my family would tell you. <laughs> I think that's the secret behind many successful authors. Okay, so Craig, what other questions do you have? Well, you know, it's funny because you were saying too about like um, the uh, the traction that you got and at the beginning and thinking that you know there was some algorithm that was uh, helping it along. And of course, um, I think if that's true, wow, did I fail on my first video? Because I think I have like 180 like views that uh, that really just came from the authors that, you know, in the newsletter when I sent it out. But And that's fine. Like, I, I think one of the successful um, points about the TikTok videos, which I didn't do, and I probably won't do with mine, is having that human face to them um, and having a person on them where mine was just, you know, book covers, and I'm just trying to sort of promote some of the books that we well, that we do at Hidden Gems, but, um, you know, having you tell your story and, and, and that's what people want to see. They want to see a human person telling a story or doing something. Right. And so that's part yeah. of it. But, um, I think that, you know, your success, uh, later, uh, um, was, you know, probably due to, uh, as we said, a combination of factors, but I, I assume that, um, the way it works is you get the right people seeing it and then sharing it out. Right. So, Clearly, yeah. there's probably a lot of that. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, I think that what I managed to tap into, because at, um, at, at some point, I don't know at what point the algorithm decides to put you on the For You page. So you stop, um, you stop having like just the people who follow you seeing your stuff and you go on to the main like For You page which is when they're starting to feed your video to people who um, don't follow you. Um, and so that I think is really where the traction begins to occur, especially in this scenario. Cause I think what happened was that I tapped into a whole market of people who aren't necessarily readers or voracious readers or already interested in books the way that like book talk is interested in books. Right. And um, oddly enough, and this is not this is not typical or at least has been typical for me um, and other authors that I've spoken to. But my paperback sales like blew digital out of the water. Oh, that's fascinating. Which tells me that I really had tapped into a market that doesn't normally read on a Kindle. Wow. That's yeah. That I know, and I was getting a lot of messages like I haven't picked up a book since high school, and I loved your book. It got me back into reading. I mean, I got so many of those messages that my 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 um, bibliophile heart was just like <laughs> just so excited about that. But you know that that is uh, really interesting to hear, and it actually sort of makes me wonder like how did these say because obviously so now you you reach this audience of people, not only that weren't fans of yours uh, prior to this, but maybe hadn't even been reading in general or reading romance yeah. or reading whatever. 
So mm-hmm. how did the sales of the rest of your catalog get affected by, by this? Definitely um, a very big boost and it's been sustained. I mean, obviously it, it can't stay at that peak forever, but um, I would say that it's overall boosted everything for me. Right. You've got quite a big catalog. Uh, uh, I do, you? 13. I have 13 books published right now. Yeah, and they all have beautiful covers. I mean, they look, I think, Thank you. yeah, we spoke about how the fact that the book was so well put together was one of the reasons why it made it so easy for people to buy. But the nice thing is the rest of your catalog just looks beautiful as well, even though you have certain different styles throughout. Thank you. I'll do a shameless plug here and say that was Sarah Hansen at OK Designs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so how did the, um, like, I saw that you did another video of the same book, um, which yeah. was sort of like a, just in a different style, sort of, sort of yeah. I guess, telling the story in a different way. Right. So what was the thought process around doing that? And I know it, it still had a lot of views, but now, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like anyone else probably would think the number of views that that one got was viral. But then you look at the views that the original one got, and I know. Like, that was just a little video <laughs> because, the, yeah. you know, so it was something like a million views for that second one, but versus 14 right. million for the first one, right? So what was the yeah. thinking there? And uh, about why, Sorry. why, <laughs> no worries, why you did that, that second one? What was the intention there? Well, after I did that first one, you know, I had so many um, author friends, like, why haven't you done another one for that same book or, you know, whatever. Um, and, um, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I haven't, I didn't think that I should. And um, they're like, you should definitely do another video for that book. But I didn't want to do the same format just because I didn't, you know, I mean, I'd already done that one and I wanted to try something a little different. And so that's what I did. But I know that April 1st, 2022 is around the corner. So I am thinking, like, I wonder, you know, if I should do something similar again. Can't hurt. <laughs> right. So we'll did see. did you notice any extra sort of boost when you did the second one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, it went up to, I think, 78 in the Kindle store from that one. Wow. Which I will, I will happily take that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that tells us a lot of things, right? Because... Uh, it, you know, on the one hand, you can say uh, the people that are following you already and sort of the, the uh, reach that you got for the first one would probably be set. Like my gut feeling would be if to do the video about the same book, you'd probably be reaching the same people, right? Because you have the same followers. Right. But clearly you didn't. You reached uh, a, a maybe not as big of an audience, but still quite a large audience because you went to yeah. 78, which is great. You know, anybody would yeah. be happy with 78. Uh- Right, most definitely. And also, I think the interesting thing about the second video was that even though I didn't reach as large of an audience as I did the first time, I did have a lot of comments on that video, people saying, I've, I've read that book already, and I loved it so much, you know, all these really great comments. And then these new people, these new readers, new eyes on the video, see these comments, and then it's, it's social proof. It's safe for them to go spend their money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just like a review. Yeah, for sure. Very similar. Yeah. Just like a review. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, um, so in terms of the elements then that go into the success, right? So we have the first video where it was on April 1st and starts with, it's all about the April 1st. So you had that angle. You have this great book. You had a whole bunch of elements that went into it. And you did the second one. Now, the second one didn't do as well, but still did amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that shows us that, you know, there's there's different factors that go into it, right? There's the time factor. There's the other, other elements. Otherwise, yeah. but still the book was clearly a big draw because it still did well, but it maybe it didn't have some of those other elements, plus the fact that a lot of people had already seen it, right? But then if you look at um, a lot of your other videos that they haven't done as well, even after those ones, when you have a lot of mm-hmm. people um, following you. So I think that sort of shows us that it's like all these different elements, but you still need a good product, right? You can't just, not that your other books aren't a good product, but like you still need, everything has to line up. Um, for it to work. And that's why it's so hard to say, to come up with a formula for success, right? Because, you know, now you have all these followers, you would think that it would be easy to just replicate it again and again and again, because yeah. 
all these people are already following you and stuff, but it, but you still have to get all those elements in place, which is so difficult, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, you know, people have tried ever since social media started to define what, how to make things go viral. And I think people have certain guidelines, but I, it still seems like one of those things that's that's like magic. It's very difficult to replicate. You can't, and maybe that's the best thing about it is you can't copy the formula. I mean, your career as a writer has been changed completely by this, hasn't it? Yeah, um, it absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely has. And um, I think one of the most important parts of that viral video was that there was an element of human connection. You know, and I think, I mean, people want that, you know, and they felt, I think they felt not just curiosity about the situation itself and how it played out, but I think they felt sympathy or empathy. And that is huge in storytelling, right? You want to make the reader feel empathetic toward your main characters. And I think somehow in that video, I captured the empathy of these of the people who were scrolling and stopped scrolling because of that yeah and i mean it was a killer opener line as well you know my boyfriend dumped me on uh april fool's day oh that's that's true that that is true that did happen um oh I, that part was oh. <laughs> that part's true yes, okay my boyfriend in college did break up with me on april fool's day and i did say is this a really bad April Fool's Day joke? <laughs> he said, no, it's just very bad timing. And that is in the books. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, I totally agree. It's that it was that definitely that human connection that pulled me in. So I'm sure it pulled in everyone else. And that was that was what I was saying earlier was why, you know, videos like the ones I had done aren't going to take that traction because there is no there is no human element. Right. It was just showing book covers. So I think you absolutely have that. And you told a story that uh, clearly was empty. I mean, everyone was like, oh, that's uh, like why that person, <laughs> you know, like wow right. an ass right yeah right yeah no for sure i've heard some people say that the one of the the things that is counterintuitive about social media is that some the raw of uh, the rawness of it is sometimes the thing that makes it work so there are lots of people who are trying to do you know book covers and and highly polished ads and stuff whereas you didn't have anything fancy it was just you and a camera telling a story and I to me that struck me as one of the things I think that again came across as kind of like attractive because it was authentic and and not overproduced. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was definitely a lot of authenticity to it. I mean, even for that particular video, um, my hair was like still wet from my shower after the gym. You know, like it was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that all those elements worked in your favor, right? Like I think so. You know, it, I think a lot of people see these overproduced videos and they think that you're just trying too hard. You know, like is, this is somebody who they're not posting something real. They're posting something that is trying to just get likes and get, um, you know, whatever, like those kids on that Netflix show where they're just all day filming them themselves doing ridiculous things, hamming it up for the camera. And, and just it's so fake. I mean, obviously they are successful, but that's a different sort of medium that they're a different sort of audience that they're trying to go after right but in sort of author stuff I don't think that overproduction is really doing anyone any favors yeah. nope so as we uh get a little further down here I have one question if there are people watching who have considered TikTok um but hadn't made the plunge yet what would you be your advice to them uh to convince them to actually just like make a video um people or authors which ones i mean I, I would or... say i'd say authors but also authors. people just don't mean not that authors aren't people obviously <laughs> 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 um, we're just robots i'm just kidding um well i would say um i guess speak from your heart about your book i mean when authors have a book, it's their baby, right? And so um, it can be hard to talk about your your baby, which why that's why it's been hard for me to talk about my book that really is based on real life, 
because it's my it's my baby. It's so precious to me. So maybe I'm talking to myself here too, but um, to just put a level of, um, just put some space between you and your baby and look at it objectively. And um, you have to be creative in a way that maybe we're not used to being creative because we usually have 300 or more pages to be creative and flesh out this whole concept. It's like writing a blurb, like how do you condense a whole book into a blurb? It's very difficult to do. And now you have to do it in like, 30 seconds time, you know, to get somebody's attention. So maybe just taking a step back and looking at your book from um, a different angle, because there might be hooks or plot twists that you can talk about in the book that you wouldn't think would work, but they may work on TikTok for this audience in particular. And don't use the three minutes. They Sometimes they can, they can give you up to three minutes. Don't use the three minutes that TikTok will give you. Keep it a minute or under. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's good advice. I think um, they, they expanded it too. Like it used to be, I think a minute was all you could do. I don't know why they, I, I guess it's like Twitter where Twitter used to be half as many characters as they allow now. And people that were just, oh, I can't write as much as I want to write. Gravity is the soul of wit. <laughs> yeah. said, so. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, cool. This is, I think this is the kind of thing that, um, is going to be really helpful for people that don't know enough about TikTok and whether or not it's even worth, you know, investigating and, and trying out because, um, you know, it, it, you, your story just shows us that you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to overproduce. You don't have to come up with a, a big script. You can just sit down, talk to the camera and, you know, it might, that might end up working. And just because the first one or 10 or 20 don't work, doesn't mean that your 21st won't take off. And it doesn't have to be only about your new releases. It can be about a book that you put out four years ago, you know, especially if you can tie it into some sort of relevancy uh, to maybe the date or what's going on in the world, right? If that's, if your if one of your old books is relevant now, that's probably a good starting point. Yeah. So, yeah, well, so I think we're probably coming up to the end of the end of the time, but um, is there anything you want to plug, you know? Do you have uh, a new release that you want to? I just, this, well, this, yeah, this past year, I released four books, my Hayden Family series. So it's like That's contemporary cowboy family saga. Yeah. Oh, that was the Patriot and the Outlaw and the Calamity and the Maverick with those. Correct. And okay. so people can find you on uh, on Amazon by typing in Jennifer Millican. Uh, and do you have yeah. a website? I have jennifermillikanwrites.com and then I'm at Jen Mill Writes on all social media. Yeah, including TikTok, of course. So if uh, anybody hasn't seen it, they should go and uh, give a like to that video. And I think that um, I probably know the answer to this. I think it's probably too premature. But do you have any inklings yet about like, what's happening with the option for the uh, that you can talk about or not or is i mean sometimes you're under some sort of nda but you know is there anything you want to say about that um i can't get specific quite yet but it's but moving I can, I can say that there is forward motion that's amazing because sometimes you know they the option doesn't mean it, anything's going to get done with it and the fact not at that all. And, which is fine because it's free money, right? It's like they're going to pay you in case they ever want to do something with it. You know? Right. And I, but, uh, I could always say that it was optioned for film. I mean, that's always yeah. that's always in existence, you know? That alone. It's I, just, I can like, go on the resume for forever. It was optioned it, for film. <laughs> it's an honor just to be nominated, right? There you go. Exactly. So I'm going to take away from this rumor confirmed casting of Jennifer Lawrence and Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> and then I'll spread that out of social media. <laughs> <laughs> that that we'll take that clip and we'll that'll be our promo. <laughs> <laughs> oh great. <Good> <laughs> yeah. Um anyway, so wrapping up, thank you so much, Jennifer, for taking the time to come and speak to us. Hopefully it has been really inspirational to, to people because I think there are all sorts of opportunities open to writers that never were before. Um if this is the first time you're tuning into the podcast, uh, whether you're seeing it on YouTube or listening to it on Spotify, uh please can you make sure to click down on the subscribe button and give us a like and leave a comment if you want to hear more. 
uh, this being Craig, Craig. Yeah, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, this has been great. Uh, yeah, I love it. It was awesome. Thank <music> you.